Hey everybody, Rabia Sutton here. I am going to talk to you today about development, personal development, professional development. Kind of like uh, if I was going to go back in time and talk to my 20 year old self, what would I tell her uh, to help her get to where I am a bit faster, maybe and avoid some landmines along the way. So what would I tell my 20 year old self or 20 year olds out there right now who know that they are destined for greatness and maybe don't have friends who are who have either realized that they are themselves or are not on the same kind of trajectory track and so uh, their friends maybe and family may not be as supportive as they could be or just maybe doing things that they know aren't going to get them to where they need to go um, and so I think, you know, the first thing is you need to be very clear with yourself, like what's more important that you go out, you know, drinking and clubbing and doing whatever else you and your friends want to do, or is it you getting to your mission? And I think for me, uh, a long, for a long time, I was struggling with what is my purpose and even what were my interests and passions. And so I remember like, you know, in my 30s, my husband was very clear. He was in the education system, and so everything for him was, like, super crystal clear. If it's not good for the kids, meaning the students in his uh, building, then he wasn't for that thing. So he was. all of his decisions were made through the lens of, is this good for the kids? And I just used to revel at that because I was like, shit, I don't have that. I work for a corporation. Like, their bottom line is how much money can they make? Like, that's not, you know, something that's super motivating. Um, and so I, you know, struggled with trying to figure out what that was. I knew I wanted to make an impact on the world. I knew I had a lot of good ideas. Um, I knew that I would, you know, at some point jump and, and start my own company. But until then... What was I going to do to kind of motivate myself and, and be able to see through a crystal clear lens of what that motivation was or what that end goal was? Because then it removes all the chatter, right? If you're super clear on like, this is the thing, then nothing else matters. Your friends, your family support, like you're going to see it all through that lens and you're going to be able to just kind of deflect the BS. Um, and so my... So the, I think the first thing is like, what, what is your interest? What is your motivation? What is that thing that you know you're here to do? Um, what is fulfilling for you? And even if you haven't honed in on what that one thing is, what is something that you know is up here above all of the chatter that's down here? And once you can figure that out, then you can see everything through that lens. And even if you make something up, just because, but it's something that if you told people, they'd be like, oh, okay, no, I understand that. Like, you know, if it's not good for the kids, I'm not doing it. Like, I, you can figure something else like that, that is, you know, th philanthropic uh, and that nobody can really argue with. And if that's what you need to tell yourself and you're, you're pe the people around you to get everyone to uh, go along with and with what you're doing and so that you take less heat when you don't want to go out and party, um, then, then do that. Uh, and then, you know, you eventually you'll figure out what it is that that thing, that mission is for you. What do you do when you think that your age is, is a prohibitor for people taking you seriously and, uh, and validating what you say? And you've probably had experience where <laughs> as you were growing up, people have done this to you. Um, and the reality is when we are little, when we're little kids, we don't care what people are going to say. We tell them what we want, what we think. We ask why we ask good questions. We're constantly trying to kind of create and figure out our surroundings. And so there, there is nothing that says you, because you're 20, that your idea or your thoughts are any more or less valid than somebody who is 30, 40, 50, 60, a hundred. Um, it's BS you have just as much right to be here as anybody else and you have just as much right to talk up to t speak up and uh tell the world what you think as anybody else and then you just have to for your own sanity remove the expectation that everyone's going to be in love with your idea 
that everyone's going to get behind it, that everyone that you, you know, encounter is going to have something good to say. They're not. And that's okay. Not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to like what you have to say. And that's great. But that just means that you get to identify they are over here outside of your circle and you can keep going and finding the people that are. What if, what if I'm at the age now where I'm not sure if I want to go to college, but my parents are putting a lot of pressure on me to go to school, but I know that there's something more I should be doing. What advice would you give me? So there's a couple of things. I think, you know, if you uh, are on the trajectory to go to college, because that's the expectations that your parents have uh, and, the, and the kind of mini society that you are growing up in, um, if you have time, if this is your senior year, if this is, you know, the summer before, you have time to start something, some type of business where you could be earning income so that you don't have to rely on your parents or and or so that you can show them that you can do something outside of going to college. But I also think you have to be very specific. It's not okay for you to just go to your parents because they're indo- they are indoctrinated with their belief system about this is the way to go. And for, you know, for for especially for minority groups, for women, for, you know, black, Latino, Asian uh, groups of people where school wasn't accessible and was downright like you cannot go because of your skin color or because your your ethnicity, this has been an important thing to overcome. And so you are dealing with people who where that is their frame of reference. So you can't just go to them and be like, nah, I you know, I'm just not feeling school. I don't I don't I just don't want to go to college. Like they're not hearing that. They're that is not a good enough reason. You need to figure out why you don't want to go. And it could be something very practical as you know, school is I'm not is not the best place for me to learn. I learn by doing. I need to go somewhere. I'm not opposed to learning, but the structure of college is not where I where is not the best fit for me. So I need to go somewhere where I can learn a skill while I'm doing on the job training. Uh, go get an internship. Go start a business. Show them that what you can do, and and come to them with some real facts about what your thoughts are. And think about them. Don't just come to them and be like, no, I've just not been in school, so I'm just going to sit on your couch. Because that's what they think. Like, you're not living here. I'm trying to have my freedom. They want you out, and they want you, and they think that this is the way of the world. And you've got to give them some context and some options outside of that. You can't just, you know, go with the okie doke of, like, no, I just don't want to go. Um, and I think that's what too many kids do. And then that's the reaction that they have from their parents. So think of it like a book report and go get your facts together and present them in a way um, that your parents will, you know, understand. And then the best way to do it is start bringing in some income. They can't really argue with that. And if you're bringing in enough and they do argue with it, who cares because you have enough money that you can move out and support yourself. I'm in a toxic relationship and I'm young in a toxic relationship and my um, significant other doesn't understand what I'm trying to do and they're they're not giving me the support I need. How do I explain to them the support I need or communicate to them, or do I just leave them? If I am in a toxic relationship Mm -hmm. and my significant other doesn't support my dreams or my my mission, uh, what do I do to convince them or do I just leave them? Um, And I think so many characteristics go into this question. So... Obviously, like, you know, if you're married and have kids and, you know, you know that's the one for you and everything else is going well and this is the one thing, then my advice would probably be you need to, it's a communication thing. You need to figure out how to <clears throat> explain to them why this is important to you, um, what you're going to do. And then a lot of times it's also like asking for your significant other's help. Nobody wants to be in a relationship where somebody's taking off and you feel like, you don't either have your own thing or you're not going to be involved. And so that person doesn't need you in the same way they may have in the past. And so I think that is something super important. But then there's just assholes who are never going to support you, men and women alike, because that's what they've been modeled in their life. They don't know how to be supportive of themselves or other people. And so they're never going to support you. And, you know, if you're 20 or 21 and you've been dating the same person throughout high school, college, whatever, and they're not supportive, you need to go. Like, life is too short. You need to go find somebody who is supportive. 
And, you know, thankfully, like, I haven't had to deal with this in my relationship. My, my husband is very supportive as I am of him. We have had to have clear lines, you know, when we first got married because we got married, you know, very young at 23. It's like, you know, if I'm going to school, you're not going to school. Like, we, we made a vow that we were not going to be in, college, in a graduate school at the same time because we also had kids. Uh, and so we just worked it out and, and it was fine. But there's nothing that he could say he wants to – today, if he told me he wanted to do something – completely different than what he's doing today I'd be like okay good go do it and he would tell me the same thing um and so those are the types of people that you want around you whether they are your significant other partner parent siblings friends if they are not supportive of your goals then no matter what they are um and it's something you really want to do then you need to, you know, figure something else out and maybe they don't need to be there. But then I'd also say on the flip side, like if you, you know, have a goal and you've explained it and they are giving you, they just see that there's things that you're not thinking about or they are trying to give you <clears throat> constructive criticize, criticism and you're not listening, that's, you know, a piece of it as well. But I think in the main, like, you know, your heart knows, your mind knows whether this person is treating you well or not. And typically, if somebody isn't supportive, they're not supportive in, in other areas of your life, and you need to go. So the question is, how do you stay motivated? And what do you do when you are in periods where you're feeling unmotivated, and how do you kind of maintain that motivation? Um, and I, I think for me, the my overarching kind of conclusion is, People are not, people are unmotivated when they're, when they're doing something that they're not excited about or not happy about. Typically, if you're doing something that is your interest, that is your passion, that is your purpose, you're not, you're never going to not be motivated. You're never going to be unmotivated because this is what fuels you. So if you're telling me that you're not motivated to do something, nine times out of 10, it's because you're doing the wrong thing. Uh, or the culture around it is set up and it's horrible and you can't deal with it, you know, from a soft scale social kind of perspective. Um, and, and this gets into like when we start calling kids and even adults lazy, is it really that they're lazy or is it that you're giving them something that they have no desire to do, are uninterested in, and so they're not going to perform the way they could if they were interested in something. And you know, you see this time and time again with kids who are really good, they, they're excelling at some kind of recreational activity, whether it's sports, you know, acting, playing an instrument, they're fantastic. They'll spend countless hours doing that activity, but when you ask them to you know, study for history, uh, or chemistry, they're like, eh, and they don't put the same level of effort in. It's because they're uninterested. It is not because they're lazy. It's because either they don't get it or they're uninterested. And so that is obviously going to lead to un be unmotivated behavior. Um, and then there are times where when you're running a business, things are just, there's a lot, a lot of pressure. Uh, things aren't always going well at the same time. And if you have enough of that stuff, uh, bad stuff going on, which happens to everybody and has to happen because you have to go through those things to learn and to be able to appreciate the, the good things on the other side, then you may feel like you're overwhelmed, which then may also feel like unmotivation. But I don't think it's really that it's unmotivation. I think you just need to take a break, go recharge, and then come back to it because, you know, there's just a lot of stuff going on. So what do you do when you feel like you need motivation? When I feel like I need motivation, I automatically know it's because I've been tasked, I've tasked myself with something or I've been tasked by, by you know, my team to do something that I don't want to do. And so in those cases, there are things that we don't want to do that we're going to have to do as the owner of the business and just in life. And so it's just about doing something, either doing something super calming or super fun before I have to do that activity or just scheduling it and just making a commitment that you're going to do it and then getting it done and getting it over with. 
uh, but trying to make it as easy as possible on yourself. Um, that, that's what I do. How do I define success? Um, for me, success is, get, is reaching my goal. Uh, right now, I have goals for my personal life. I have goals for my relationship with my spouse, with my kids, with my friends and family. I have, really, I have goals for my business. I have many goals within my business. Um, so whatever that specific goal is that you are uh, talking about, I think that success for me is you attaining that goal in the amount of time that you think or have projected it's going to take. Um, and you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of conjecture around being happy and, you know, money and success and which one is the better and, and, you know, how they flow together. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with making money. I think you need to make money to be able to experience the things that you want in life and just, you know, obviously take care of the, the necessities. Uh, I think happiness is a state of mind and that was something that took me a long time to learn. I think I didn't realize until I was like in my mid twenties that happiness was a choice. I really, really, really thought that you were either born happy or you weren't. And, uh, there are a lot of people in my personal life who are just chronically unhappy. And so I was like, shit, am I going to be like this? And I, you know, started listening to a lot of, you know, personal professional development, you know, Deepak Chopra, Wayne Dyer, um, watching, you know, Oprah Super Soul Sunday, uh, Rhonda Byrne, a lot of, you know, the predominant folks and just really like working on myself to figure out what, you know, happiness is. And I think happiness is, I think success is multi-tiered. There, obviously it's getting to your goal, but then, you know, it is, whether you're happy doing it, whether you're doing it with integrity, whether you are, whether you've set up the culture that you want around it and can leave that legacy to other people, are you being kind? I think there's a lot of things that go into success beyond money, which is what really, I think the predominant topic that people uh, talk about when they talk about success. Thanks for listening guys, Rabia Sutton again. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to my banter about development, professional and personal. Please let me know what you guys would like to hear more about. And if you have any comments, I will jump in and uh, answer your questions. Uh, I appreciate your time, thanks. Bye.